and I'm a phony, the worst thing you could be called, the guys who are at my core and, and been with me for years, they all, they all know the stories of what I was, a psychopath. Not one of them died on Molly, on Zan, on GHB. They're on everything. They're sweating the fuck. Yo, let me tell you something. Good. I make more money than you. You shit on the entire Muslim. Yo, what the? F yeah, hold on. Is one on? Blue. Is that on? Yeah. Move. You sure that's not broken? <sighs> Sorry about being late in traffic. Yeah, I mean, he kind of phoned me at 12.45. I was sleeping. And you hit my line with like 14 calls and said, come here now. This is the most important thing that's going to happen to you while you're in Miami. I did a piece of it with you and it got interrupted. Big, big problem. I promised you I'll do the whole thing. Just not that night. Now I got time. Now I'm ready to do it correct. I don't want you to scrap the other stuff. You're going to use it? I mean, I might. We got some footage. It was a little bit unhinged, but, you know. Yeah, sorry about that. We'll, uh, we'll work with what we got. Hotel is being weird. They're uh, racist. They're treating me different. What race do you think that they think you are? Albanian. The, the master race. You know Hitler? I've heard a thing or two about him. We inspired him, right? They're Jewish, so... Just saying, I didn't, I didn't do anything. I'm saying the people of old, the Albanians of old, disavow, total bad guy. Yeah, who are they? Because they kind of walked in and they were literally just sitting there like MK Ultra it out. <sighs> that you read the comments? They say, they'd say that about these girls. These girls are my Padawans that I'm training. You understand? I've got two suites. One in one hotel and the penthouse here. Nine bitches on the other one, but they talk a lot. And I told them I don't like talking. You get it? So the ones that uh, listen, I take them here and I have fun here. And it's a lesson to the others that if you want to come to the nicer suite and not stay with those lesbians, it's just a bunch of girls in a they're not allowed men there. I got one security guard there, big black guy. I pretend like I like them. He's not letting anyone in. These ones chill on their phone, do their own thing. These are the good ones. These are the ones you reward. Yeah, you said fun. What does fun sound like or entail? We love to go out on the town. We love Wagyu. We love teenagers. I don't know about we on that one. Unless you're talking about, you know. The something. trinity here is what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. Just wanted a little bit of clarification. Bon appetit. <laughs> Not that well trained. <laughs> Not yet. So, you know, I was just, I was on the phone with my mom. You know, we were having a nice conversation. And What are you, Moroccan? Um, you know, some... Thing Jewish? Or, hey, you know, we can't really... Are you the chosen people? I got two of the chosen people right here. I mean, some would say you're chosen with how often you've been winning lately. How could anyone deny me being the chosen? The chosen. The chosen icon to bring Christian, Christianity back to the masculine. How can anyone deny that? They can't. So no one can deny the word of God. You and all your buddies who make fun of me, like, oh, you're partying, but you're like a Christian. Do you sin? Does he sin? Does, does the people watching sin? Man, 
The whole point is to be saved by accepting Christ. Stop pointing at my flaws. Everyone watching this shit watches porn. That's way worse than me fucking a teenager. That's way worse, right? <clears throat> at least she's, for, she's learning. For some clarification, like what is teenager exactly in this context? I like, we like to keep it vague. I don't like to fucking label things like that. We're having fun. I mean, we're not doing any crimes here, right? No. What crime? You think we're drug dealing? You think we're fucking trafficking people? And come on. Yeah. When, has, when has a red pill guy ever trafficked someone? Not in America, at least. Not nowhere, you know. Tate, it's 100% innocent. So is Tristan. I mean, the only thing they're guilty of, really, are being... Now, would you say uh, your mom gets word back of any of the behavior or things, you know, the word goes back up the grapevine? Like, do you have to explain yourself to her? Or do you have more of like a white mother where she says, hey, son, I hope you're having fun. Like, what's the deal with that? I have an Albanian mom that would cut my head off if she saw me living like this. But... She already endured five fucking years of anxiety every night from me working security at the dirtiest fucking bars. So, so what I'm doing now, she's filled with euphoria that I'm not in that $10, $15 now. $15 can, that's not USD, bro. She's filled with joy because she said, you're either getting stabbed or you're gonna kill yourself. You got to leave, you got to, I'm like, oh, I'll leave this next month. I'm just going to find a job, blah, blah, blah. Five years passed. I don't, I don't see her for five years because I'm sleeping during the day and working at night. And she works during the day. So now that she actually gets phone calls with me and anytime, she can call anytime. If it's an Albanian mom, they'll fucking kill you for this. But my mom is like, she thinks it's a, it's a miracle. So you were so bad that your mom is willing to accept that you're moving in a different direction, some would say. I mean, think of it like this. Have you ever seen an online character, right? I'm a character. Like, I, these, these girls are hired and then they go home, right? Like, they're, they're, they don't actually party with me. I mean, personally, I have seen <laughs> Have you seen a you? character like me? Ever? Would you put a character like me in a security position at the dirtiest bars? Would you put any loud mouth, someone calling people goat fuckers? I'm the worst person for that job. So my mom said, look, anyone can work security at nightclub, not my boy, because he has serious, serious problems with, <coughs> with authority. Now, you gotta remember, I got fired from every, I swear to God, I've got fired from every job I ever had. Even the online ones I'd get banned. It's always because someone said something the wrong way, boss, coworker, or someone at the ropes at the club would disrespect all of us, really. You know, those big shots. And uh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Have you ever been institutionalized? What does that mean? Well, psych war. You know, like when Ye got that text from the guy that said, "Hey, man, you know, we might have to send you." A into Jew? A, was a Jewish guy or was uh -huh. a black guy? I, I don't know. I think he was just a, his uh, fitness coach. I think he's a fitness coach for some other uh, celebrities. The as bald well. guy. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that What's guy. His name? Uh, Harley Pasternak. Have I run into one of those guys in Hollywood, LA when I was doing that? Is that are you trying to say, like, have I been popping pills because I have a handler? I'm just doing? saying if you've ever had to be admitted to a psych ward or something like that. I'm trying to figure out if you're all the way there mentally. I've been in drunk tanks. See, I, I only tell the truth. I've been in trouble with the laws. Not serious, serious. I've been in drunk tanks. It's like a big metal car that they'll put bar guys the cops or whatever and uh some group therapy things and uh it's not really for me you know like that self-improvement shit is not for me so what would be the opposite of that 
Self destruction? Well, I don't think I'm destroying my life. And everyone on the internet with the Twitter, you saw all the Twitter stuff about uh, uh, getting jumped and stuff. They're like, you're destroying your life. You're fucking cracking. You're. I don't even do drugs, bro. I'm just I got some bad luck that week. That it that happened twice. I got it was a bad week. Look at the rest of 2023. It's all good luck. So I might what I'm destroying my life because I had a perfect year and a bad week. Let's suck my dick. Who's calling? Who are you? How are you? What do you want? I just wanted to say hi. And I had a few questions. Yeah, hit it. Um, how you been, bro? Are you are you feeling okay? The fuck would you? Why are you asking me that? Because I've seen your face. What? I've seen your face on Twitter. Who's that? Do you know who we're filming right now? Is this like? Did you tell him? I don't even know who that oh, is. Are you are you Arian Panda's editor? Yes, bro. What do you mean you see my face? Oh, for... Huh? On Twitter, uh, Panda told me that you got beat up by some Muslims. But that's not really... I just wanted to see if you were, like, really bro, okay. I'm telling you right now, bro, you're calling in the middle of me doing the fattest line off a teenager's crack. I'm, 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 more, I'm more than okay. Okay. Hey, say hi to him. Hi. Yeah, so I'm about, I'm about to rip this. Arion, I appreciate that, but... We're filming right now. You calling, and it feels scripted. This actually feels scripted. This is crazy. Arian, is this scripted? Do you, are, you, are you in on this with Yassine? You, I don't even know. Wait, you story. guys met at Panda's house. I don't think we've ever met. No, I'm not even, bro. I'm in Vancouver right now. Wait, do you know who Yassine is? Who the fuck is that? Okay, let's sketch. Weren't you in the house with Arian? I mean, that who the fuck is that sounded a little <laughs> bit disrespectful. Where you live? Just some, just some friends, but, uh, hey man, like when you call me and I'm doing an interview and you say, I want to know how you feel. That's kind of homosexual, like man to man. Like, I know you're like, what, 20, 19. That's kind of like, what do you, that's kind of like gay. That's like, like, why are you saying gay shit to me? All right. All right. Yo, PayPal me a hundred and you're forgiven. Right. He's trying to be one of my editors, and uh, that was weird timing, but uh, actually keep that in. That's really good. That's, that makes it look like uh, I've got people who care about me, but he's trying to get an editor position because now that I have five, six, I have a whole team, um, my team says it's not enough. Like, there's too many shorts and YouTube and TikTok being pushed, so they said, like, let's get a big team and... You know, I've got money to spend, so I'm, I'm hiring editors, but I haven't hired him yet. He just sends me clips, and that was weird. So how are you able to put together a team when you couldn't even show up to this interview on time? Or any interview, for that matter. So, listen. Everyone's going to ask this question, so I have to ask it, even though I know the answer. Well, I don't know the answer, but are these two paid to be here? I hate doing this, but I'm just going to do it once. On Jesus' name, they're not. And if you look through my Twitter feed, I was doing this with the shades and this character. I wasn't even doing this on camera. They Snapchatted with me at their fucking hotel. You can see on my Twitter, I've been partying all week because all I do is podcast, radio station, party. Podcast, radio station, party. That's all I do. Another thing is like, if you go back into my social media years and years when I was bouncing, you see this exact, when I was minimum wage, I was doing this. So those guys who play a character and stuff, um, your character will get tested, right? Like one day you'll be at a party and then the whores won't be talking to the character. And then you'll be like, what the fuck? But you, every hotel lobby, every party, every club you'll see me at, all whores around me. You think I got money like that? My, I rent the Ferrari. I don't got money like that. All whores around me, why? When masculinity is scarce, toxic cocaine masculinity gets all the women. There's one uh, on the, in the other suite I have. She's married. 
but they're they're Buddhists. So I don't give a fuck about breaking that marriage up. Right. So that's not really recognized as a marriage in your well, eyes. Well, if they were Christians, I would never talk to bitch, and I'd probably just figure out who her husband is, and destroy her life. And I've done that on my Twitch channel to two girls, but I I didn't meet them. It was like all through Discord with my team. I got a bunch of hackers in my Discord because uh, you know there's right. You know politics, there's modern right wing, and then there's what I am, right? Little right of Mussolini. It, it attracts a lot of rich crypto fascists. And when I started this, I was like, I'm never going to make a dollar with my opinion, but I'm never going to feel phony. So my opinion will always be the most based and badass opinion. It'll get me the most views. But no brand deals, none of that, you know, big money and stuff. Who cares, you know, like it, if, what's a homosexual in a Ferrari? A liberal. What's a Ferrari, a leftist? Who am I in a Ferrari? No, the Ferrari is in me. I'm the bread. You get what I'm saying? Like, when you make millions of dollars being politically correct, you can never enjoy that V8 ever again. You pull up and you go, man, I'm sponsored by a dildo company. And just don't look in that guy's eyes. And they'll be like, Dildo Dave, it's still you. Can I get a picture with you, Dildo Dave? Imagine being sponsored by that kind of stuff. Sponsored by cocaine in this bitch. Yo, do we have fucking any Gatorade? Is the V8, uh, yeah, I think we can get you some Gatorade. Is the V8 reference a um, metaphor for the cocaine being inside you? Or like, what's the deal with that? Because I personally haven't seen you do cocaine. First of all, I don't platform the use of drugs. I think drugs are for homosexuals. And I think most cocaine will get you killed. I, I got money. So I get executive coke. It doesn't kill me. It's right from Sigmund Freud's cabinet. If you're poor, cocaine kills you. If you're rich, it'll still destroy your life. But it'll be the real shit. But you'd rather... So, hey, hey, 99% of people watching this, you're going to snort and die. You're going to snort and die. How many people drop dead? A lot. You come party with me? 900 a fucking gram? It's fucking worth it. You get to live. 900 a gram? Yeah, it's expensive... What's your life worth? Think about it. Is 900 gram that much? Is it that much? You know, these fucking parties, like, I don't know about that, bro. 900 gram, but you get to live, nigga. So circling back to one of the previous points we made was that a comment you know we were going to get, which is, were they paid to be or Why do you think that is the first thought that comes to these people's mind? Because there's so much polarity with who I am. There's footage behind the scenes of me reading a fucking book like a... There's footage of... But me... not, not just any book of you reading manga, to be specific. Yeah, sure. I, I don't give a fuck. I, no shame to that. I like anime. I read whatever. There's footage of me building Legos with my nephew. And they go, that guy's a character. That guy, that guy. Are you kidding? I just want to build some Legos on Coke. I want to build a tower. There's footage of me doing very wholesome things. It doesn't mean I don't rip a rail off a teenager's butthole. Right? Like, I, there's polarity to me. And it, I'm saying it with pride. No, I'm not. I'm proud that I'm dishonest. I love teenagers. I'm a pedophile. You know what a pedophile is? Uh, I think so. Some, some along the lines of Jeffrey. No, that's a real file. Okay. I'm a pseudo file. I get close to the edge, never jump. So you're like a celebrity that pretends to be a gangbang. No, I gangbang, but my biscuit is small. I don't go fucking Draco and all that. I don't old block with a fucking small gun. Self-protection. Right? It's a little She's ruder. 18. It's very close to... It's not... Still gangster, just not, you know what I mean? You're not in the thick of it, so to speak. Yeah, like, I, you'll never see me with a 17-year-old on camera, will you? I'd certainly, you think you'll see that? I certainly hope I don't see it ever. 
even off camera. But we don't spend time with each other like that. So, you know, hopefully that's something that doesn't occur. I asked you to come to four different parties. You never came to one. You think I'm actually partying with 17-year-old girls or something? What are you so afraid of? You know, you're kind of volatile. I mean, you're a decent interview, but I really don't know what you're like outside of a professional environment. Would I put you in danger? If you'd put yourself in danger. Have I, I ever? Best I... Coke? Don't drink alcohol. Maybe some wine. That's not alcohol. Water to wine. A bit of wine. You ever see me do shots? Never. You ever see me drink? I used to drink a bottle of Jameson every night when I was bouncing. A bottle every night. And I never hit a woman. You know how hard that is to do? Like drink a whole bottle? Yeah, it's a whiskey. Difficult. You know whiskey? I know about it, yeah. I used to be an alcoholic until I realized this shit's gay. I can't make a dollar with this shit. So you're not a fan of Xanax or... Xanax. Molly. Alcohol. Psychedelics. LSD. It's all gay. Percocet is the gayest one. That one will make you suck dick. It's a little blow. Keep me sharp between the ears. You think that's why they had rappers push Percocets a lot? Oh, yeah. Molly. Percocet. Moly, Percocet, what's that doing to your lunar, subconscious, female, left side of the brain? What's that doing to you when you sleep? Moly, Percocet, Moly, Percocet. What's that thought loop that you don't even notice? You're at a party and you're like, I'm in a beer. And then you're like, oh, you have Percocets? I've never tried one. But you, my favorite rapper made that one song. Like, I, I want to be like him. I'm addicted to downers destroy your life. It's all psychological programming. If I got on TV every day and talked about how much I love slapping a child and I made it comedic or, or musical or I use a different vessel to hit more parts of your psyche, would the percentage of hitting children go up? I personally believe so. What are, what, so what are these... Wet ass pussy and so what's that doing to the youth? It's making them <clears throat> whores, whores, little whores. 99% of women on earth right now are whores. Do you think you're helping maintain that number or reduce that number? Let me tell you this. If I went full perfect and did everything right, I wouldn't dent it even at a fraction of a percentage. Do you think I'll touch a fraction? Personally, no. Now, if I was behind all mainstream media and I chose what people saw on TV, would I bring that number down? You could eliminate that number. Would I be doing this on a big mainstream platform? I really don't know. When it happens and I do it, you'll know I sold out. When I'm talking to 20 million children and I'm with whores on TV shaking ass, you think, I, you think I'll go to bed like, oh, that was, that was a good music video. You think I'll go back to bed happy doing that? I'll pull the plug on that. People are like, well, why do you do it now for your like, impressionable audience and stuff? I live a transparent life. The alternative is me hiding it and not affecting a fraction of the percentage, and then someone just takes a picture of me doing it behind the scenes, and it blows up, and I'm a phony, the worst thing you could be called, and it has an even more impactful statement, because then they go, if he's hiding it, it must be so good. His lifestyle must be, he's keeping it away from us. I gotta be, every, the whole youth that sees me in public and wants to take a picture of me, none of them are degenerate. They look just like regular kids, and they, they know, they, they'd be 17, 16, and they'll be like, yeah, these bitches are whores. They, they talk like that, but you click on their socials, like when I go, you know, get a 17-year-old girl, she's a fan, I get her socials and check the, how, if she's reposting my clips and stuff. It's not like they're living degenerate lives. 
but they will, you know, as they grow to 20 to 23 to 25, that's when everyone morphs even more. Heartbreak and all that stuff happens. You lose the love of your life and you become a whore or a whore maker. But you look at the people who watch me, it's like, they understand. Well, they've seen everything, not just like right now that I'm buzzing, all these guys don't know anything about me. The guys who are at my core and, and been with me for years, they all, they all know the stories of what I was. A psychopath to what I became. A like dude in a bathrobe that drinks a little wine and makes informative content for, for everyone. And do I bully people? No. Do I attack people? No. I push the message of Christ. I mean, you kind of got attacked. <sighs> Is there evil in the world? Absolutely. I've been jumped so many times in my past, I've almost forgot about this one. Actually, I almost forgot. Yeah, okay. when we reached out, you- No, because when I got jumped in the past, it was for a girl, it was for this, it was for stupid shit that I felt ashamed of. Getting jumped for, for saying your God is not a God, it's all your gods, all religions' gods are demons. My God is your God. For getting jumped for that, this is the, easy, the easiest conversation I'll ever have with the creator, right? Do you feel like you would have enjoyed life more in the medieval times? And what do you think your role would have been? <sighs> I'd be a knight and uh, growing up in that society, like you believe the dark age is a blah, blah, blah. It's all lies. It's an atta attack on Christianity. Knights never even told white lies. If you research this, they never told one white lie. Everyone was just good. Everyone was faithful to their wife and family unit, like 99%. You and I, we would never even swear, right? We wouldn't say fucking bitch, punk this. We wouldn't say any of that. We'd just be grown up different. Right? The criminals in that society, they were just fucking drunks of the town. They weren't even that bad. Now you got like 15 year old dudes in Chicago that are way scarier than a fucking OG gangster. They're the ISIS. They're not even organized. They're boom, 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 boom. Now it's the, <coughs> this is, this is fucking, this is ghost town. Now it's anyone can die anywhere. You get stabbed anytime. And then they'll put on TV. You can die from someone's uh, knee being on your neck. Uh, no, you can't. I worked five years as a bouncer. You know what? Ask any bouncer you know, security guard at nightclubs. All of them that have clocked in two to five years have had their knees on someone's neck for over 45 an hour sometimes with other dudes holding the other limbs. I've had my knee on a thousand black dudes' necks. Not one of them died on Molly, on Zen, on GHB. They're on everything. They're sweating the fuck. They're kind of popular. Hey, I'm in the middle of a, I'm in the middle of a podcast thing. Okay, okay, just stop messing Yo, let me tell you something. Good. I make more money than you. You shit on the entire Muslim. Yo, what the fuck? Okay, this is my brother's really angry that I'm shitting on the Muslim community. He just keeps attacking me. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I think I'm gonna get choked by my uncle and. So the family reunion is going to be a little... They've never been more mad than... Um, I forgot who snitched on me, but... I think my little cousin... Uh, they don't like the attacking Muslims. Thing. They're like, yo, you're attacking us. And I'm like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. You mentioned vessels earlier when you said pushing a message via music, via... Let's say um, you said music is one of them, as well as comedy. What are these other vessels? How are they used? And what is their what efficacy? vessels like comedy? Yeah, you said, for example, if you had power and you would push this message of, let's say, for example, slapping kids and you use the vessel of comedy and you use the vessel of music and Science these other that. vessels, etc. So can you expand more on that concept? What do these vessels hit? Why are they effective if they're effective at all? Just like Hitler said, if you want them to believe you, the masses, he's a populist like Trump and all those guys, 
that are true populists. They, he, Trump dumbs down what he's trying to say so he can reach a wider audience. Like people think he talks dumb. If you, if you talk to him off camera, it's a way different pace. It's a way different vocabulary. I'm not saying it's, he's like a linguistic fucking genius. I'm saying it doesn't sound like he's giving a speech. But he, the populist understands tone, messaging, to smash into your diurnal, nocturnal pulse and really uh, affect you through the ether, through the mental plane. But Hitler said, if you want a lie to consume the masses, you just repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it, but only if it's huge. The lie has to be huge. That's repetition as a poetic type of synchronization to the psyche. There's repetition. There's rhyme, right? Because rhyme is every time it pings off a rhyme, it's actually smashing a memory. Like it's, you know, memories will come like boop. And it rhymes with a bing, bing. It'll hit harder. Imagery, all that. And um, a lot of people don't know they're doing it. Well, they try and they, they don't get what's happening. <coughs> then there's... Uh, there's informative style, like the way liberals do it, where, hey, I'm Hassan Piker, and uh, you put a knee on someone's neck and they're gonna die, because like, when they're not ripping off people and beating up pregnant women and, 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 and snorting fentanyl, they, 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 they're, they're out saving the world. And informative is like a lot of channels that are boring. The informative is the easiest one to beat. Like if you saw Andrew Tate's first week on the internet, he consumed the left. Like he literally, if they, they have to censor him because he's blowing up too fast because informative and leftist type thinking is way too boring. And boring does mean dishonest, by the way. The truth is so fucking interesting. You know what the truth about black people is? They're like this much of the Americans, like minority. I forget the percent. What's the percentage? I believe it's around 13%. 13% and they do over half the crime. These niggas is on overtime, you know? See, that uncomfortable truth, they can't... No one can turn off the fucking channel right now. Oh, I'm so offended. Oh, my God. Why are you offended? And if I had masked it and, and, and buried it with political correct talk, would you be offended? No, you wouldn't. But would you know the same information? Fuck no. Well, the black community has had socioeconomic problems ever since redlining and the crack epidemic. That I mean, that is true. Give me a fucking break. The truth slices through everything. And the beautiful thing about the truth is it doesn't actually get suppressed, right? Even if 10 years pass with censorship and stuff, it comes back stronger every time. Just look at the right wing through Trump, right? He got suppressed with the Obama administration eight years. And then people are like, He's not even doing anything for the black community. He's like fucking made the rainbow, rainbow White House, right? The you know, White House is now black. No, it went rainbow. He did LGBT stuff, turned everyone trans through fucking affecting uh, mainstream and social media. Everyone turned gay. Look, forty percent of Zoomers are fucking gay. Obama boomed the rainbow everywhere, and everyone's just like, yeah, but he's black. No, that's like the whitest president in history. The white dudes do the gay shit usually, right? You think, you know, the gay community are all from minorities. And we love BLM, BLM, BLM. Niggas hate you guys. Go to, go to the hood, bro. Niggas are straight as fuck. So it's like, it's not compatible. All right, that's why you'll see some... Look, what I'm trying to say is, it's all a sham. If anyone, any channel you watch this politically correct, you're just frozen in time waiting for the truth. And the truth might hit you hard. If I gave a white identity movement speech right now and made it comedic and sliced through everything, just made it just hit. People, young boys who've been watching their girlfriends get fucked, little soy boy white boys for 10 years who've had enough and they don't know why they're having suicidal thoughts. They interpret that suppression, that self-aggression, which is depression, how do they interpret a white identity message? Aggressively, because it hits all at once and they go, oh, these black guys, I hate these N-words. And they turn into bloodthirsty people. Very few, like very tiny because white people, white people are so general. But the point is, you, if you run from the truth, 
it's going to, before it frees you, it's going to put you in the material world's cage because you're going to act like an animal. You won't know what to do. You give someone who's not politically correct like me white identity facts, like, oh, it's cool. Yeah, white people don't do that much crime. Yeah. It's not like I want to fucking go lock up black people and go crazy. You know what I mean? It's like the fucking truth. I'm used to the truth. I do this with bouncers five years, right? We'd have smoke breaks. We talk about it all the time. <clears throat> that censorship and suppression is not because they don't want the truth out because they, they, the ruling class knows it's coming out. It always comes out. They know who God is. The suppression is a order out of chaos where they stranglehold you with order before chaos and then they reorganize society, right? They've done it through every revolution and they control both sides usually. But when there's mass censorship happening for a decade, it's building to something. And you really think the ruling class is dumb? No, they go right to control the controlled opposition. Whatever it's building to. If it's building to a socialist hellhole, they immediately start funding people like Hassan Piker and stuff, and they start getting their clowns in check. And then they lead that movement. But before they lead it, it's a Hegelian dialect. You bring two groups of people who hate each other. You, oh no, excuse me. You make two groups of people who, who are tolerant of each other hate each other. There's so much bloodshed and friction and war of attrition. There's so much bloodshed that everyone says, stop, we don't want war anymore. We need peace. And now there's peace and diversity. The ends justify the means to these people. Does that make sense? For instance, would you say that a lot, there are a lot less... I just closed that door. Would you say there are a lot less masculine, white Christians now than there were in the 50s? No. There's nowhere, to, there's no masculine Christians. Why do you think I'm leading the charge? You know, I spent... My whole life, couldn't wait to go home from the club so I could have a girl suck my dick. And as she sucked my dick, I'm planning shit, bro. I'm gonna be alone. I don't wanna hear this bitch talk. I'm gonna tell her to leave. And now I'm alone in this fucking dark apartment and I'm waiting for the world to come cancel and pitchfork me to death for the shit I say that I get away with because I work at a nightclub and they still fire me for the shit I say. I'm living kind of terrified. And a young man, no future, no nothing. I had nothing to look forward to. I would just watch the 2016. There would be riots and protests. I'd just watch political channels and Alex Jones and them going on the street with the pussy hat march. Do you remember that? Yeah. And I remember thinking, I'm going to wait for the masculine, white identity Christian guy to come on the scene. And I waited till I became old and it never happened. And... I, when you wait that long and you're just waiting for that kind of message, eventually you either snap completely, completely have a mental breakdown. There's no one coming to save me. Or you lead the charge. Well, the difference is that you were waiting for a white guy. So, you know, it was taking a long time. But if you were just looking for a masculine one that was following the religion that you wanted to get behind, then you could have found one of a different ethnic group much easier. It wouldn't work because look at Trump. He appeals to his white base. So if some American led that charge, do you really think they're going to capture, a, you know, is it going to be a populist message to capture majority of Americans? Fuck no. They would need to cover all their bases, but a Mexican ain't leading a Christian charge because throughout history, you know, Christianity's touched all corners of earth. At one point, you can research, it's buried in their dark web. All Indians were Christian at one point. I do not believe this. I've got some stuff I'm going to send you. The whole world has heard the Gospels, not once, thousands of times over. The white people were just the most loyal to the cross that's it and you'd made that joke that you're like well in the past they were probably the worst and i like gave you pushback i think you're you know i'll take that back probably i don't i don't know all of the if the news is fake history is fake the timelines warped mega this there's scholars who say we're like two thousand years off or this 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 we don't even know what the fucking date is 2023 
All we know is we start at the Jesus point. That's all we know. That's it. So if it's 4,000 to two, uh, year 2023, whatever it is, it'll be on connected to, to the cross. It has to be connected to the truth in everyone's, in everyone's mental. It, we all share that mental plane. So, yeah, I don't, I don't really see like a Mexican leading that charge. But even if he was better than Trump, if he was more based and all that, I don't think you can appeal to that many people when humans are so tribal. The good thing about the whites leading the charge is they're very fair. And people think I'm playing a character, but go work for immigrants and then go work for a white guy. And to, really, why don't you com go compare? You know, well, it, what's the it, percentage of immigrants that are in such a high position that you can even work for? There's like this is such a small percentage. So, of course, if you get a sample size of 99 white guys and then one immigrant, a bad immigrant business owner is going to overrepresent. No, you look at short term reward systems and cycles in the brain. Anyone who thinks short term usually ends up going to jail for short term pleasures. Anyone who thinks long term becomes very successful. The long term thinkers don't like drama. They don't want workplace drama where they rip you off for a thousand dollars on your paycheck because they know that everyone in town is going to hear that you're ripping people off. They know long term it's going to affect their business. Immigrants are very short term thinkers. They're like, oh, I ripped him off for a thousand, fired him, and they don't go that far. The white man doesn't, it's not that he's better and a nicer and great, kinder soul, and he doesn't want the drama. He wants to build a Fortune 500 company fairly, not because he's fair, not because he's Christian, because it shows that the way he thinks, the patterns, and really Christianity affected him most because when the white people, uh, were the most loyal to the cross, even as they became secular and atheist, they still have those thought loops from their parents, grandparents, and ancestors and ancestral DNA. So they just turned out to be more fair. Anyone who's had a white boss that they've hated, really ask yourself if you had a hundred white bosses or a hundred minority bosses of any color, who percentage wise, where are you making money and where are you getting ripped off? I get ripped off with my people and we're white, we're white, Albanian, right? I get ripped off. I've worked for every color of people and they're all good to me. You know, I barely got scammed by a lot of them because they think I'm going to stab them. But I remember... Where are you going to stab them? Back then, yeah. I just remember the percentage being way too high of I'm way too successful when I work with the tribe that was the most loyal to the cross, even if they're watching the girls get fucked now, and they're those kind of whites, for some reason, their history bleeds out through their business practices and stuff. And remember, what that's why white people had the most money and peaceful mind. And then, you know, they got taken over by the one thing that makes the most money. And you know. Now, would you rather get ripped off by your boss, or would you rather know that your boss likes his wife getting taken by other guys i'm willing to get ripped off personally suffer a yeah, couple i'm not of dollars. Yeah, i'm not defending this no no i'm not suffer, you, i'm not defending this no no, I'm not, no no i'm not defending this because that's not even a marriage if your wife's getting fucked. that's not a wife that's not a marriage hey that, that's what they say i'm not defending it malcolm x greatest american of all time yeah, he I talked said, about that. I said that last time. You stole that from me. I did not steal it. You were a Martin Luther guy. No. no. <laughs> I, I, that, that is my claim, that Malcolm X is the greatest American of all time. Now, that's the first black president. I mean, that's why they killed him. And Obama's the first homosexual president. But, uh, yeah, when it, it's funny because it's like anytime black consciousness is going conservative and correct and towards God, even if there's no God message, like with the late great... Even if there's no violence. I'm saying with the late, great Kevin Samuels. You know who he is? Of uh, course yeah, you I've do. Yeah, I've seen him. Yeah. I remember when he was on the scene, and I was shitting on all the Red Pill guys. The messaging is wrong. The messaging. And my community would say, Sir, you're the only real Red Pill. And I'd say, no, I'm not. It's Kevin Samuels. He's in a suit and tie. He's getting the youth, the black youth, to stop thinking blue and Democrat. He's getting the, the man masculine. He's doing everything correct. Who do you think I'm going to be when I'm an older man? Was he really political, though, Kevin Sanders? Absolutely. I think he was assassinated. Really? I don't know. I didn't really see the political message with him. Kevin Samuels, 
Who do you think? Who do you think I want to be like? Oh, Zerka, you're, you're your own hero. You don't want to. No, I would. You can find clips of me saying this. That's exactly what the youth needs. I really don't think they need me, but in these times, I know if I put a suit and tie on, I won't be effective. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, but I don't know how much of you as a character, even still. Ask the pe ask anyone behind the scenes how much. I think the only thing. The only things about me that is a character, if I say something fucking outrageous, ridiculous, you can't believe it, it's the truth. If I say something that is so fucking outrageous that you were left in awe and think I should be put in prison, that one's probably a joke. Yeah. I mean, one thing I'd like to understand is how are you able to go on these four hour cardio sessions walks when you smoke some i mean there's three packs of cigarettes i do cardio with right four now. cigarettes that's it as i go for my hikes four cigarettes that's all i need instead of a water bottle and everyone watching this is laughing hard right now i swear to god this is not a joke that's how i do cardio and how, is it good for you? No, cigarettes are from the government trying to kill you. They, you know, they can do this with just tobacco and it'll be the same thing, but they have to add 4,000 chemicals. Well, can't you do that with just tobacco too? Like, you know, just buy the paper, put the tobacco what in it and roll it. What makes you think I haven't? The you, three boxes on the table that are out of the shot currently. You don't think I have someone who loads these and puts them back in the box? I wouldn't put it past you. You've ever seen me buy a pack at 7-Eleven and then smoke it? I don't think we've been in 7-Eleven together yet. Might take you. You like Indians? Pause. That sounded a little gay. You like uh, Apu? You want to go to 7-Eleven? I was a fan of the character, yeah. Me too. Just not the race. I'm, I'm a fan mm. of the Indians mm. too. They've never done Which people do you not like? For me, it's all of them. Black, white, blah, blah. They're all born in a fallen state. They need to accept Christ. Zerka accepting Christ went from crook and criminal to... Well, crook and criminal? With lawyers now. I wouldn't say criminal. I haven't seen you commit any crime. I was destructive before to the everything around me. Now I'm just destructive to myself. Like, who's really being harmed besides me? Nobody. Before, I was punching people in the face for coughing on me. And it, here's the worst part. This was before COVID. So imagine my urge now, after COVID, when the grandma at the supermarket coughs on me, and I go, to do everything I can not to break her hip. With Christ, you can do anything. And that bitch strolled out of there. Fucking with every hair on her scalp. Mint condition. God is here to reduce your sinning. Now, if I became a much more violent person after Christ, then you can say, this guy's not a Christian. This guy's a hypocrite. This guy can't say it when I'm fucking killing it. Mm -hmm. Not killing her, the grandma. Do you ever look back at your violent past and feel a sense of shame or regret that it took you too long to find Christ? Because who knows? No, because I worked in, in the nightlife. Everyone deserved it, even the guy who did it. If he's in that club, he deserved it. Can you elaborate on that? The who's in nightclubs? Fucking sleazeballs and dirtbags, rapists and molesters and people drugging people. And you know, even the good guys at the club, and I'll see this, I'll just be like this, you know, just, just you know, guarding the door outside, music playing, and there would be a babe coming out like a wounded gazelle, <laughs> drunk as fuck, stumbling to the car and without her friends, right? So this one left the herd. And all the nice guys, all the non-crooks needed to go talk to her. They were fiending to get her in a cab and take her home. 
And that's the first time I didn't get fired for fucking someone up. And I was very, imagine the good businessmen who are not the gangsters. You know, that's, that's a rapist. This loaded language, you're gonna call me like, oh, you're being, you're overreacting. If you start drooling, and I'm not saying, if you're drooling for her to get her home when she's that fucked up, that's normal. That's sin, you know, that you look at tits, you want to grab tits that are not yours. Yeah, I get the impulses, right? But when you act on it and you try and convince yourself, no, I'm actually just, I'm not, I'm not going to touch her. I'm not, even if you don't touch her, if you stay by her bedside and make sure she don't puke, nigga, you a stranger in her house. You had every other fucking thought of taking her back to her friends or talking to a security guard, getting her to the security in front of the cameras. Who are your friends? We grab your friends. You don't leave. Worst case scenario, we call the cops and drunk tank this bitch. Every single million ideas you can have to guard that bitch, they're all null and void because you need to do it yourself. And you're not the most capable. So, so what, what's, so what are you, what are you trying to do? It's you're, 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 you're gambling with being a rapist. You're gambling with taking on that identity. And when you see good men, normal men, non-gangsters, I mean, actually, a lot of the gangsters were like, no, 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 this is actually kind of weird. But I think gangsters obviously would do it too. When you see this, every time someone says to me, now nah, you, you got a weird impression about humanity because you worked at a nightclub, just saw sleaze, back, sleaze balls and all that. No, there's, there's, there's people who are never in the club. It's like they're here for a birthday once a year. And even they would try and, you know, like women, women at low HP drinking, men get aroused by this, right? And I think all men get aroused, like maybe 10%, 20%, but most men, 60, 70%, that's, that's your good guys. And then you point to me and go, Mazurka. I mean, can you see me ever going in that fucking car? Me, it, it, that, even when I was like not God fearing, I always felt like I'm being watched. I think you'd just be annoyed by her and want to stay away. Yeah, yeah. or I'd get lucky and she chokes on her vomit and dies. It's like, yeah, add to the kill list. That's a joke. But there are no good people, man. Go to the library, go anywhere. So do you the good think people were in this at the peak of Christian theocracy? That's the last time we saw good people. Do you yeah. think the problem was the environment that turned these people like that, that weren't usually at the club, or do you think they were just like that? Environment affects nature because ancestral DNA. Get, you know your ancestors' traumas are passed down to you. I think they. Did you that, know like, that the genetics? Your great 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 grandfather. He went through a heartbreak, identical to the one you had with Sally. But you'll never know. He didn't tell anyone about it. I don't think that's true though, because you know, our great grandparents, it was a better time. They meet a woman, maybe they're 15, you don't think 16, that's true? and no. they stay together their whole life. Do you have the genetic traits of your parents? Oh, absolutely. Do you have the flaws of, their, of your parents? Uh, some, yeah. Those flaws are so hard to overcome that if your great grandfather had a drinking problem, you're probably gonna have one. If your dad had a drinking problem, you, it might not be drinking, you might like Cheetos and be obese, but you still want that quick dopamine reward system. Your ancestors' problems loop and reoccur. Your job is to stop all the loops. That's when you find yourself in a suit and tie like Kevin Samuels and hopefully married. I don't know, he wasn't married, but married and living a normal life. You're, that's why I say, me going from the darkest, satanic motherfucking, practicing all sorts of non-ordinary states and meditation with, at a Rosicrucian temple when I worked for these businessmen, and just practicing uh, their backwards review and reflection and meditation and just all the Rosicrucian practices, but I was around Satanists, and I didn't take them serious. They were broke, these ones. You know, I only took the fucking businessmen who were making a lot of money. Those Satanists were real. Oh, there's Luciferians. I thought that was like, what the fuck? You guys just like to read those intellectual books. There's all sorts of these kind of people in the club. And these guys were the smart ones. And the dumb ones were just called gangsters. They didn't read any books. 
But the high-level gangsters, they use occult sciences to manipulate, manipulate their way to the top. A gangster businessman is mafia. A gangster broke guy, it's a mafia. It's the same shit. It's just gangster. The difference is reading. You give an evil mind a book and he enjoys it, he spreads. He has a higher capacity to spread evil now. All of this, I went from all this evil to Christ. Am I locked up right now? Is, is there a case against me? No, I'm just... You understand? Now, would you ever want to be my roommate if I wasn't a Christian? Be honest. I personally wouldn't would want you, to be your roommate now. What if I went hardcore into Islam? Because, I, you know, I'm very right-wing, so I would be with ISIS. Would you want to be my roommate then? No music. You can't play music. I'll cut your head off. Probably not. But so you want I... me to be a Christian? You want me to be a Christian right now in this fucking interview? I just don't want you to be my roommate. You see the point I'm making? You need me to be a Christian in this interview while we're alone. Because if I, if I wiped it all away, you wouldn't have your team on all the cameras and shit. You guys wouldn't do this. You guys would say, you know what? Maybe we'll do a Skype call. You want me to be a Christian more than I want to be a Christian. That's the truth. For me, you know, it's hard. It's hard to, like, clean up your life. And you're a Muslim. You're a Muslim admitting you want me to be a Christian more than a Muslim. I mean, you just called me Jewish last time. It's all the same shit. The only thing you haven't called me is a Christian. Not yet. Because when I'm at the top of the top, you think I'm not going to buy you up? Now, do you think, okay, so let's say your ideal is you have this theocracy based in No, Christ. not me. That'll be Nick's. I'm just the martyr. Okay. And we're not letting the sinner lead the movement. Fuck no, I'm not Andrew Tate, where he hides the coke and the whores and he says, I'm actually a good person. No. No, no, no. I'm just a sword. Matter of fact, I'm a spear. Throw me. It's going to be someone doing, doing it for real. A virgin, pure Chad who can get any girl, million dollars at 20 years old. It'll be Nick. It will never be me. It'll be the guy, the most feared guy to talk to on the internet. It'll be a guy who Andrew Tate, Jordan Peterson, Ed Ben, nobody wants to debate the truth. And that nigga is the truth. And you don't take him serious because he looks youthful and stuff. It will be led by someone that is actually... I don't know, I'm not going to go into depth with this, but go ask my high school friends who I was in high school. I lost my virginity at 20 years old, very late. <clears throat> never drank, never did drugs, none of that. I was Nick. Identical. Without the suit and die, but identical. Without the racism, I'm assuming, too. No, more. Way more. I had a diverse group of friends, but we all hated every, most of the races and stuff. Well, isn't that like the least racist environment if the group is dead? For us, not, not, for, not for strangers that we see on the street. You know, we see a Chinese guy on the street, I'd be with my Chinese buddy, and then, you know, we'd go after him. What is going after him until? Like, he knows at the back of the bus, we're like making fun of him. Like, I think he can see us do this. You know what I'm doing behind my, my, my glasses? I'm doing Chinese eyes. Brung. They fuck so much and they're all atheists. And China, without any foreign wars, like the wars we do for Israel, all the Middle Eastern wars, they became the economic superpower, the flagship, without no wars. That's what a slave atheist population will do. So isn't that do more work, do more work, do more work. Right now. And they actually did more work. Everything's made in China. And let me tell you something, that's not a good thing. Like you wanna mass produce, you wanna go you get a made in China condom and tell me how that goes for the next 18 years of your life. You don't want that. You want Christians making it. So they go, when I make this condom out of lambskin, if you do sin, you'll never answer 
Moloch and the abortion demon. Well, the Christian wouldn't even want you to use a... a no. Yeah. Christians who say, don't sin, are psyops. No, 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 but, you know, they would rather have the children come to life. Not, not sinning, but wouldn't they encourage you to marry if the child came out? I genuinely don't believe the antidote is to encourage people to not sin. Because uh, has it been effective? Like, be honest. Be, has that ever been effective in, in the last seven years? Let's say the last seven but years. I don't think that's been happening the last seven years. I think degeneracy has been pushed forward more. But hold on. Let's circle back to the China point. You said they're winning this and that. So kind of like the points you use to further Christianity, isn't that maybe a testament that maybe atheism or whatever they're saying perhaps is the truth uh say that again atheism is the truth because they're winning yeah you said what did the bible say what did the power? bible say of who's at the top and all around you it's not the good guys you tell me it's anyone who makes uh, channels and makes packs with demons 33 percent of all fallen angels that adhere to lucifer i'm telling you this white people are the richest with the most peace of mind but they're not richer than the state of you-know-who because the state of you-know-who is known for rejecting Christ. So in the material world, which is blink in a second of infinity, they're going to win for a blink of a second, but they're not going to win even in the material world. You look at Epstein or any of these guys, they're always sweaty, worrying, and, and, and always on edge. All rulers are always on edge that they're going to get snaked by another ruler and get killed because they're all rapists and murderers. And think of Epstein. His job was, you know, let's say I'm a pedophile, right? I'd bring you here and I'd say, I'm Jeffrey Epstein and you don't know anything about me, right? But you have the, what's your, what's your name again? Yassin. For your, do you have a, you have a YouTube, right? Uh, yeah. That's a, what is your YouTube? It's uh, Hello Yassin. Huh? Hello, you seen. Is it, that's kind of why that's kind of white of you. Hello, you seen. You're a hip hop channel. What the fuck? Yeah, too. That's some of what we do. Let's say I brought you here and I said we'd like to invest in Hello, you seen. Let's let's say you didn't have a f name. Let's say you had a It's you seen. Change it to that. That's better for you. Hello, you seen is like who are you saying hello to? You're not myself even, in the mirror. You're not even on camera on your videos, are you? No. That's because you're afraid of your hip-hop audience. They're like majority black. You're terrified of them, right? I wouldn't say that, no. Really? You like niggas? Yeah. Maybe, maybe in the good old days. But listen to me. Let's say I said, hey, I want to pump $22 million into your channel. No catch. Are you down? Probably, yeah. Would you come to this hotel and negotiate? I mean, Hear me I'm, out. I've already done it for. What if I what if I took you to a nice dinner and gave you the keys to a Lambo and said, "Hey, bring that Lambo to this hotel. We'll talk about our investors pumping your YouTube channel." Yeah. You'd be here. Okay, let's play it out then. Hey, uh, that's uh, that's my niece. Just yeah, you, honey, sh shake Yasin's hand. Go ahead, shake it, shake her hand. I mean, how old is this niece? I mean, I'll shake you the hand. You would shake the hand, I'd wouldn't you? I'd shake the you? hand, yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's a polite gesture. Darling, take your clothes off. And she's eight years old, by the way. She's going to strip naked. What are you going to say? Well, once I hear that, I'm going no, no, to get no, the no, hell no. out of there. No, no, you're going to think it's a joke first. You're, you're never going to think a big businessman is. What the fuck is this? And the niece, she takes her clothes off in two seconds. She's butt naked. What's the first thing you say? You're going to say, what the fuck is this, right? Probably if I'm not already out of there. Well, you'd be packing up your equipment and leaving, right? Yeah. Maybe even leaving it here. So, how many seconds would you be in that room as she's naked? Less than one. That's all we needed for that two-way mirror. We got the photo. You work for us. And you're going to take our deal. That's blackmail. And that's what politics is. If I ever, and I'm not suicidal, if I ever get killed, it's because of that one. If I started saying more names, would you be compromised? I'm not going to lie, that's a good one. Of course it's a good one. Use your fucking brain. Corruption's the easiest thing you could do. I can destroy your life in a second. 
I think you're too busy. Hey, bring Shelly in here. We might have to cut this part out. It just takes a second. You don't know anything because you watch Andrew Tate and these people, they don't understand. What do I love more than God? What did I love more? Before I came to God, what was my obsession? It was power. I don't want to read books. I just want to know how the ruling class operates. I have to read the books. Obsessed with power. When I worked in nightclubs, I had to be the best. I worked with veterans and gangsters, and they're all 45, 32 years old, and I'm fucking 21? So I'm going to fucking take the cocktail of drugs that makes me the most violent. I'm going to take halo testing, the most androgenic. I'll be slurring my words, poisoning the venom in my fucking liver. I was dying from taking fucking Tic Tacs that you're not supposed to take. Very violent fighter, MMA fighter type performance enhancers. The most androgenic testosterone you can take. Beating the shit out of MMA fighters because my cocktail was better. Their steroids fucking sucked. Destroyed every organ in myself to keep me safe. That's how elites do it. They'll cheat to win. You're never going to win against a cheater. Ever. There's a girl in high school who fucked with me once, made a rumor about me. I became her best friend. And I sat beside her every fucking day. I said, that rumor is funny, you know. It kind of destroyed my life, but, you know, I could take it. And I'm very antisocial, but now I'm all playful and funny. For some reason, she, I'm the funniest guy, just to her. How did that, where did that funniness come from? Every single class, biology, every class we had together, she put in her homework, and I would be in the lineup right behind her. So I can walk with her throughout the hallway to then, you know, always go to different classes. And I took her homework and put it in the trash every day for two months until the semester and the end of the semester. And she would be crying so hard, not knowing why she failed. And the teacher's like trying to figure it out, look for papers and call. It was too late. And I picked the busiest time, last six weeks, not two months, last six weeks, when it gets very busy. That by the time she finds out, she's doing tests and provisional exams. She don't have time to see if... Hey, your homework, and I'm sure, no, no, I give the homework, I'm sure Miss J will find it. Destroyed her whole fucking life. Two different classes I had with her. To this day, she's my friend, and she doesn't know about that. Do you feel she deserved that? It's not the point. The point is you're never going to win against evil in the material world, right? So, so if you enter a market or a job that's evil people, what are you really? What are you gonna do? You're gonna adapt, or you're gonna go broke. All right, sin is contagious. That's why, really, you should just be a fucking farmer and live a good life with your wife and kids. That's the only option. We've kind of been rolling for like a, an hour, and then you know your two sidekicks <laughs> left at some point. Did the payment run out, or? Why don't you grab that camera? Hey, Mindy. Come here. Nobody leaves this place. You're not gonna be on video. Come here. I just, I, I wanna show you a scene. Come here, I wanna, I'm gonna, you're not on camera, don't worry. I'm just gonna squeeze. I wanna show you a scene something. Okay? Is this ass real? I would say so. Come feel it. Not on camera. That's, that's why I like, that's why I like Muslims. Do you understand? You guys understand property. That's my fucking property. That's why you're not like everyone else who's afraid to have me on. Because you see that I'm morphing into an angel. I'm becoming the good guy. So you're not that afraid. You're like, there's no way I'm going to stab. You don't think I'll stab you, right? What are you, what are not you? in the current year. I'd sure hope not. I would stab you if you answered this question in a way I'd like for you to answer it. But you're, you're never going to answer it correct. What are you worth? It doesn't matter. It's not worth my, it's not worth my blade. <laughs>